Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com. Today we're going to be looking at the TIFF file format within Adobe Photoshop. TIFF is a file format developed in the 1980s by a company called Aldus and is an acronym for Tag Image File Format. It's since been acquired by Adobe Systems who seem to be referring to it as the Tagged Image File Format. It was originally designed for postscript printing and storing photographs and line art. In fact, these days the TIFF format is popular for archiving photographs because of its high quality results and flexibility. You can create uncompressed TIFF files or compress them into a lossy or lossless format. If you have your photographs taken by a professional photographer, then you can usually purchase the photos on disk, especially if it's an occasion like a wedding or something like that. The images you purchase will quite often be supplied to you in a JPEG format as well as an uncompressed TIFF format. In fact, earlier this year I scanned a collection of photographs into my PC using the TIFF file format and that allowed me to archive the best quality versions on DVD, a bit like keeping digital negatives. Once they're in the TIFF format you can quickly and efficiently convert them into the JPEG format for emailing and general viewing. If I print them out in the future, I'd much rather be printing from a TIFF than a JPEG. Now TIFF files have many strengths. Primarily it's a popular format that's supported by lots of software companies around the world. But you do get many different versions of the format. And that's because TIFF files are extendable through the different tags that can be written by developers. All TIFF files contain tags within the code to keep track of information about the file itself. OK, I've got an image open here called Stonehenge, which you can see from the text was taken in 2005. Now if you look over here to the Layers palette, you can see that the background layer, which is the photograph of Stonehenge, and then we also have a text layer, which contains the text. If I switch over to the Channels palette, you can also see that we've got the sky saved as a channel and I can load that up any time I want to. I'm going to switch back to the Layers palette. Now, remember I said a few moments ago that the TIFF format has many strengths. Well, those strengths include being able to preserve Photoshop layers and also being able to save additional channels, up to the maximum of 24, in fact, which means all the changes I've made to this document can be saved inside the actual TIFF file. Now I'm going to come up here to the file menu and select save as and I'm going to choose to save this file onto the desktop and I'm going to leave the name of the file the same and then I'm going to click the drop down menu here to change the type of file to a TIFF file right down here at the bottom. Now I've also got some extra options as to what we want to include within the saved file and if we want to preserve the channels and layers we've added then we're going to need to make sure they're ticked down here. I've also got options for saving annotations and spot colours. Both are dimmed at the moment because we don't have any of them in our image. We could also save the file out as a copy if we wanted to. OK, with the channels and layers selected, I'm going to click the Save button, which will bring up the TIFF options. The first question we're asked is, what kind of compression do we want to add to the file? None means no compression at all will be applied. LZW is a popular form of lossless compression, so using this option retains compatibility for the file, but reduces the overall file size. ZIP is also a lossless compression scheme that's gaining popularity, although at the moment it still trails behind LZW. We also have a JPEG compression option, which is basically going to embed a standard lossy JPEG file into the TIFF format. As you can see, this option is dimmed at the moment because in the last screen we chose to save layers and channels in this file, and JPEG compression doesn't actually support layers or channels. If we were saving a flat file, we could then choose the amount of compression to apply. 
The pixel order option allows us to decide how information about the pixels is written to file. My advice here is to stick with the interleaved option, which is recognised as the standard. The byte order once again is pretty self-explanatory. If you're planning to view the image on a PC, then choose PC. If you're planning to use the Mac, then choose Mac. When TIFF first came out, there was a lot of compatibility issues, but generally, now, both systems support both byte orders. We can also choose to save the image as a pyramid file, which is useful for really large images, and the benefit there is only having to open a file to the extent of what you need to edit within it. If you can imagine a pyramid, at the base you've got the full resolution version, and as you work your way to the top of the pyramid, tile by tile, you're laying smaller versions of the image. When you get around to editing the file, your image editing application only opens enough of the image to work with. I can't say I've ever used this option myself, in fact, I don't know of too many applications that even support it. So unless you really want to work with this pyramid format and you really understand the advanced workflow involved, then you're not going to be needing this option. Next we have a transparency option, and that needs to be ticked if you want transparent areas in your image saved. If you want transparent areas and don't tick this, then those areas will be saved as white. Finally down here at the bottom we have an option to compress layers within the file. Once again it's pretty self-explanatory. RLE is faster, zip is smaller, or we can discard the layers completely. I'm going to select RLE compression and then LZW compression from the top here and then click the save button. Okay, well that explores in pretty good detail the TIFF format. I hope you found this tutorial on freephotoshop.com to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching.